All right, we are up. Try to avoid the mistake of yesterday of oversleeping and not getting the earlier virtual queue. So we've got group 11 for Tron. It's time, head to the experience by 9 a.m., which is when the park opens. So yeah, I guess we gotta get going. Although looking outside, not really crazy about heading out into this. Very rainy, very crappy day. Glad today's not my day to run though. I would, it'd be miserable for everybody that had to do the modified half marathon this morning. Hey, 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 what's up everybody? It is Uncle Mad Saturday morning of Disney World's 2024 marathon weekend. We are up in Adam heading over to the Magic Kingdom area for the virtual queue of Tron. It's 8.50 now, so I don't know if it can't possibly be 9 o'clock's the deadline because the park doesn't even open up till 9 o'clock. So I'm thinking 10 o'clock would be the technical deadline. But even still, sometimes there's some wiggle room and leeway with that stuff. But if for whatever reason we miss it, no big deal. We'll try again at the 1 o'clock window. The goal for today is to take it as easy as possible, relax, remain stress-free, try to limit walking as much as possible, which is a huge challenge at Disney World because tomorrow is the race day. Tomorrow we run 26.1 miles around the resort complex. And it'll probably be an easier day to kind of chill and relax because with the way it's raining and storming outside, it's not going to be a day where you're going to be wanting to be out and moving from place to place to place to place to place. But we're going to get going, see what the day holds, take it from there. Not too terrible right now. It's like that perfectly annoying level of rain where it's just raining enough to get you wet and make you mad and weirdly the sun is even maybe trying to peek out. I'm pretty sure the worst of it's supposed to be coming in at nine or after. So this could be the proverbial calm before the storm. Which that's why they moved all the race stuff around because they want to get everybody off the course by nine. Noticeably smaller crowds making their way in right now. I think the rain maybe is pushing people away. I also think a lot of the holiday crowds that were still lingering maybe heading out today with schools and stuff starting back on Monday. Saturday feels like it would be a lot of people's travel day. It's like caved, bought a poncho. I don't know why, it's a stupid decision because I don't really mind my upper body getting wet. It's when my socks get wet, which has already happened. It's too late. We've lost that battle. I did pack extra socks though. That was like one thing at the last minute. I was like, I'm going to throw extra socks in my bag just in case. I don't know if that's going to work though because they'll probably get wet right away too. Crowds are definitely low. I got a lightning lane for Space Mountain, which is like eight minutes from now. That's crazy. Like, so I'll be able to hopefully ride Tron and jump right on Space Mountain and try to keep myself in Tomorrowland as much as possible. Flying through this morning, we bypassed the little mini pre show thing and are heading on down. I am telling you, it is night and day from what it's been like the first two days I was here. There is nobody in the park this morning. We're going to walk right on. That ride was a lot of fun. Even though you're under the canopy while it's raining, you're still getting kind of misty like air, like a water drop in the face. It was pretty cool. And some of the initial negativity that people had, including myself for it, was more tied to that it took like five years to build this. But now that that's kind of passed, it's, I can say it's a good ride. It's not the best, but it is a very good ride, a very welcome addition to the Magic Kingdom. Next up, we've got Space Mountain. There's been a lot of Christmas still up around here, so I'm interested to see, is the Space Mountain Christmas overlay gonna be up? And like I said, no weights right now. We've got lightning lane, but it's only 30 minutes standby. Presented by Jack I'm Park 5. You guys know this. Highway in the sky. You might just been the absolute best way to see tomorrow. Do you have a nice stars? Is there ever lots of space? Lightning lane, Buzz Lightyear, right? Spacecraft to Monster Labs. There's really nothing like today in Tomorrowland. The rain's just about to clear out, so maybe I'll For your safety, if you have wings, jetpacks, or gravity motorizers, please do not take flight on board. People that are out on the uh, speedway wait right now, a lot braver than me. I'm sticking to the indoor cover rides for as long as I can. Although we do have a bit of sun starting to peek out. That's good news. They were supposed to kind of linger around to like one or two o'clock. So if we can get this out sooner, 
we can have ourselves today. So Space Mountain did not have the Christmas overlay, which is unfortunate, but at least we did get to do the uh, Jingle Cruise Christmas overlay. So I've seen videos of it. Space Mountain one before. It's like Mannheim steamroller music playing and lights flashing, Christmas lights while you're flying around. It looks pretty cool. It's like that and lights on Space Mountain would be like the two biggest dream scenarios to ride Space Mountain or Hyperspace Mountain where they can make it completely pitch black. Or is that, no, that's not Star Wars, it's not Hyperspace Mountain. Deep Space Mountain? Dark Space Mountain? What's the one where they just turn out all the lights? I don't remember. I'm not a drinker, but if I was, I bet this would be fun to like go around there for like cocktails. If you're a drinker, let me know in the comments down below, would you like to do this with a cocktail? Alright, so the rain has almost all the way let up. Business is starting to pick up. We're going to do our lightning lane on Buzz Lightyear, and then we're going to maybe try an outside ride. Maybe a uh, Big Thunder Mountain. Got to get that one in. I think this one was broken. I only use this one like half the time. This one had to be broken. It's the only logical thing. Uh, in space racer, your space crew has been temporarily deactivated. For your safety, please wait and see it. This was a momentarily. Start command. I'll find out. Sacrosanic board, review the score. This one's broken. Disney. This one's broken. This was up to me at least. Start command. I'll find out. Seven horse mine train like 35 minutes. It's only like a 35 minute wait. So that's like you know it's a slow day here at the Magic Kingdom. The seven horse mine train is only 35 minutes. It's usually like minimum 75 to 80. Thought he's been hundred all week. Just have a little midday pyro go off behind me. I think my plan to bring extra dry socks would have been more effective if I'd also brought an extra pair of dry shoes because Putting dry socks back into wet shoes is... I don't think that's gonna work. It's time for one of my favorite Disney activities, a visit to the Tangled Bathrooms. So when I booked Seven Dwarfs, it was listed as a 35 minute wait. Now it's all the way up to a 75 standby, so... It's starting to pick up now that the weather's somewhat cleared up, and as I say that, it feels like rain's coming out. I think it's just getting blown off the trees on. <laughs> story that I'm sure I've shared on the channel before. Very first time I ever came to Walt Disney World as a kid, rode the original Snow White ride, and at the end when the switch popped up, scared the sh out of me. It was basically two chicken to ride rides the rest of the time we were there. I've recovered now though, I'm, I'm a grown up, I can do things now. So I've got a lightning lane booked pretty much right away for Big Thunder Mountain because it's only a 10 minute wait. And after that, be done here. I mean, there's tons of other stuff we haven't done, but like the main stuff, the stuff I like, I've already done it all. Maybe time to bounce out and find something else to do. So we're over here briefly looking at this the other night. You can definitely see better during the day. You can really see how the uh, fake landscaping trees and bushes and stuff have been rethemed over from what it was in the old days of Splash Mountain. So a better look at the uh, water tower there. Over on this side, you can see there's some artwork, a new mural that's gone up on the side of that part of the queue building there. Coming along nicely. It's supposed to open sometime this year. I would guess the later half of the year. All right, I think this is going to be our last one at least for right now, Magic Kingdom, I think we're going to bounce out after we do this and, uh, what is going on all these crows? What the heck? That was weird. Got 
to run front row privileges all to myself. I got plenty of space to slide around and break my hips. No, oh, already slide. Oh, already slide. best remove my cap, but I also didn't lose it, so it must not be the wildest ride in the wilderness anymore. Gotta say, that and space were both uh, much smoother than some of my recent experiences on them. Maybe I was just in rougher shape this summer, but when I rode those like rides this summer, I was like, I think I might have to retire from roller coasters, but now I'm back in, all the way back in. Oh yes, we have scored. There was one more must-do I had for today at Magic Kingdom. I was worried it was going to be closed because of the weather, but we've got spring rolls. This is going to make it all worth it. Highlight of the day right here. we got a pepperoni pizza one and a cheeseburger one. I don't know if I've ever had the pizza. I can't remember. I don't know if I've had the cheeseburger, though. I'm going to go with pepperoni pizza first since I can't remember if I've even had it yet. Bone apple teas. I have a cheeseburger actually. Cheeseburger marinara sauce is a good touch. Let's try that again. Bon appetit. Those really pizzas definitely got a lot more filling than a cheeseburger today. Alright, so pepperoni pizza was the winner today. It just had way more filling than cheeseburger. The cheeseburger was like barren today. It wasn't very good, but it usually is my favorite, but. That being said, I think we've done everything we came to do at Magic Kingdom for today. End on a high note. I think we're going to head to Disney Springs. We've been trying to get over there basically the whole time we've been here and haven't managed to do it yet, so now it's the perfect time. We beat the crowds this morning in the parks. Let's escape before they get here. So apparently the only way to get to Disney Springs from the parks is you have to go to a resort first. I swear they used to have like buses that went directly from the parks to springs but apparently they only do service to springs from the resorts which not a big deal we'll just walk right over here to contemporary hop a bus there and be there in no time i hope all right we have made it to disney springs and to further confirm it is still christmas at disney world all right so even though two of my favorite places are over in this little corner here what we actually came for is gideon's bakehouse to try a cookie you know i love my cookie reviews we want to try this for a while, but I haven't really had the timing work out, but uh, this line's pretty insane, but we haven't really waited in many lines on this trip, so I guess we'll do one. So she told us it's about a 45 minute wait, so I decided to look at the lines at Universal to think about what's going on over there, think about maybe go there next, and they're not too terrible today may continue to pick up as the weather improves, but I think we're going to swing over there after we're done here. <laughs> Here's a look at their menu for January. Hmm. Looks like some good options. You can probably figure out which one I'm going to go for. Let's a look at the display of the cookies they've got available. Cakes, they got cakes as well. Neat place. Look at the size of these cakes. Holy crap. Jesus. Alright, so quickly wanted to highlight what we got. As you probably would expect if you looked at the menu, we got double cookies and cream. I got a cookies and cream cookie and cookies and cream cold brew. 
Sadly, we're gonna review this in a separate video because I do cookie videos. It's part of the channel. I gotta do a standalone cookie video, so subscribe and turn the bell on for notifications so you catch that one, because I'm gonna put that one out at the end of the entire race weekend series. Oh God, there's a piano just riding around. Disney Springs. Enjoying Disney Springs? Did you, did you get caught in the rain earlier or did you stay inside? Now the smart. Don't really expect to buy anything, but let's pop in World of Disney real quick just to have a look around. Weird thing about this is you used to find like a lot of stuff here that you couldn't find in the parks, but now it uh, seems like everything is just everywhere now. And the selection they have for men is not what it once was. This would be good for my dad. I think he's the point where he would kill us if we bought him any more grumpy stuff. All right, so just a quick little pop through Disney Springs. Checked out a few things. Spoiler alert, you gotta watch the full video, get my full reaction to that Gideon's cookie, but it was good. Now, we are going to try to head over to Universal, see what we can get into over there. Sign is back, I don't know when that happened, but uh, the Welcome to Universal sign has returned. We're here. I think we're gonna start on the studio side because I think I'd like to try to do Velocicoaster once the sun goes down, so. Do two or three things over on studio side and then make our way over to Islands of Adventure. Following these signs for the exclusive pass holder entrance, but I feel like it could just be getting me lost in a corner. And I don't know if it was even necessary to have an exclusive entrance right now. I don't know if it's particularly that busy going in. Okay, here we go. Eh, no line, we'll take that. So I'd read about it previously, but I kind of forgot about it. They've replaced scanning your finger after you scan your pass with a like a facial scan recognition deal. So that's how the machines take over, I think. Since we were last here, Illuminations Villain Villain Con Minion Blast has opened. I'm not particularly interested in any of the minions despicable me stuff, but it's only a 25 minute wait, so we can give this a shot. Can't film inside, but here's a look at what this particular attraction actually is. It's like a shooter like Buzz Lightyear or Men in Black but you're on a moving walkway with a handheld gun as opposed to a mounted gun on a ride vehicle. Kind of weird. We have been equipped. This is good. Exiting right to this. I don't understand any of this. I've never seen any of these movies. I got like 400 thousand points. I don't know if that's good. I've got no frame of reference for any of this. The real Optimus Prime would be far bigger than that. He's a semi-truck for crying out loud. Still a somewhat impressive meet and greet. Know why I'm being a hater. It's funny, they have to have like a wind measure because he's so tall he might fall over I think. Actually I had good timing on something for once. Today was the first day they were offering these new complimentary lanyards for pass holders. The staff was actually like assembling them when I went in there and picked it up. I was hoping they still maybe had the holiday magnet that they gave out to pass holders, but they said they sold out of that like two weeks ago, which would track since we are well past the holidays, despite what decorations around the park would lead you to believe. I don't think I'll really get much use out of this. I'm probably more likely to lose my annual pass if I use this than I just keep it in my wallet. It's already gone. No comment. Thought we might still have the holiday tribute store since there's still quite a bit of Christmas decorations out, but it is already shut down and nothing will be here until the Mardi Gras store goes into effect. But luckily, right next to it is what I actually want to do, ride the mummy. The most underrated ride in all of Florida. Times where it pays to be a single rider. Although sometimes it doesn't always work so well this ride. We'll time and see. Alright, so wait time hit 18.26, standby was 40, so that worked out pretty good. Just debating if I want to do Rip Ride Rocket or not, but I think we're going to give it a go. Single rider line was closed, standby was 45 minutes. Rip Ride's fun, but eh, I don't really want to wait 45 minutes for it today. For whatever reason, walking down this little strip right here just uh, made me a little bummed out thinking that I missed Halloween Horror Nights this year. 
First time in a while I haven't gotten down here for HHN, but the stars just n did not align this year, unfortunately. But it's a weird year from all the videos and stuff I saw of people who did come down here. It seemed like it was a, I don't know, an off year. Like people didn't seem as into it. It didn't seem as good as it has in the past. I don't know. So I guess maybe if you were going to miss a year, I guess maybe this was the one to miss. Oh, look, the Jaminators. Or is that the Jaminators? No, that's an Epcot thing. I'm so confused. I think we're going to wrap up our time at Studios with a trip to Diagon Alley. And then maybe hop on the train at King's Cross over to Islands of Adventure in Hogsmeade. See what's going on in the alley. Literally walked in just in time to miss the dragon. Heard it go off just as we were walking in. Hopefully when they open the new Potterland at Epic Universe, they realize they made all the walkways at the Potterlands over here way too narrow. Gringotts posted 90 minute wait, but single rider was available, so let's see how long this takes. Ride's a lot of fun, I don't know if I give it enough credit. It was, uh, I forgot to stop the timer, it was about 10 minutes or less to get on using single rider, so that was definitely a huge success. Gringotts is kind of like the same stuff as the moment where it's like half roller coaster, half like screen based projection show, so it mixes the two well, it does a good job of that, it's, it's worth a ride. I think now we're going to hop on the old Hogwarts Express as long as it's not like an insane wait time. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't understand how Universal and Disney are like the most packed places in the world, but everybody here has the least spatial awareness. Like nowhere else on earth people just randomly stop walking all the time. 75 minutes for the Hogwarts Express, so we will just walk instead. Sheesh. It really feels like there should be another back entrance to go from studios to islands. I know there's like one that they open like every once in a blue moon kind of over by Rip Ride Rocket, but I guess maybe they want people to ride the train. I don't know. It feels like it, they should be able to be more easily accessible. We are right at about 12 hours away from race time. Oh boy. I may have made many mistakes. So the other day I was talking about how as crazy it is that Genie Plus costs what it costs, the Universal ones even crazier. So I'll show you here today if you wanted to add the Two Park Unlimited, which lets you skip the lines as much as you want. That's the one benefit to it is you don't have to like book a time or book a location. You can do every single ride and then with this one you can do it as many times as you want, but it's $204 and that's in addition to whatever you have to pay for your actual ticket. Let's see if they have the one use one here. So the standard express where you can use it one time per attraction today would be $175. Which once again, that's on top of whatever your park ticket for the day was. So like if you're an annual pass holder like me, you're kind of already paid. But if you're just buying a single day ticket, you might have paid like $200 already for a ticket, so add that. All right, gonna see if we can't get a few things done over here on the islands, and then we'll call it a day, because we need to get some rest. We need to be ready to go for tomorrow. We're definitely doing Velocicoaster. That is a must do. Hulk's only 35 right now, and if single riders open, that might be even faster. Spider-Man's been hovering around 20, so we can maybe knock those two out pretty quickly. And around that time, it might be dark enough to try Velocicoaster. Hulk is awesome. One of my favorites. I do like the pre-Fall Out Boy version better. Let's see what Spider-Man looks like, see if we're gonna run on it real quick. 30's not terrible, we can make that work. We can manage that. Just as I planned it, night has pretty much fallen now after riding the Spider-Man. Crazy as old as it is, Spider-Man to me should still be like a template for like what modern ride should be, the way it mixes screens and actual sets and practical effects. It's like everything's steered too much into screens now, like Transformers is basically the exact same ride except it's like 90% screens, but need more stuff like that. I could be reasonable. 
and check the app like a normal person, see what the wait time is for Velocicoaster right now. But I'm gonna do it no matter what. Night is falling, it's like the number one thing I want to do here at Universal before we go. So single rider, maybe we'll get lucky with that, but either way we're gonna get in line and wait it out and do the Lost Coaster at night. Single riders close, standard is 90, but I said we're doing it, so do it we shall. If the wait time listed is accurate, this will probably be the last thing we do today because that'll put us right about at 9 o'clock, which is part close. That's fine with me because this is the number one thing I most wanted to do today. Actually, that's not true. The number one thing I wanted to do today was eat the spring rolls at Magic Kingdom. We did both. Mission accomplished. find it important to note here that there's a missing one for some reason. Ominous music. Made it all the way to the lockers before the ride decided to go down for a delay. I'm on about 10 minutes now. And people are banging on the walls too, which makes a lot of sense. I hate it here. I knew this was going to happen. It's a good thing you got stuck before the lockers because you got stuck in the upper part of the queue. Now I can like only step away. Probably one of the stuck in the same hour down. I do say that was the one thing I was wanting to do was going to jinx it. They didn't officially dump the queue, but they finally came up with an announcement and said, You can hang around, but we're not promising it's going to well, they said, we're not promising it's going to reopen, but you can hang around just in case, or you can leave, so. Got time to do at least one more thing, so don't want to end on an annoying note, so we're going to find something to do. Funny part is, I actually did my math wrong on the timing of how long it would take, because we should be getting off it right now, because it would be 90 minutes right now, I would do my math wrong, so would have had time to do something else, one way or the other, so. <sighs> Also, everything has gone according to plan today. It has run super smoothly. I should have known something was going to screw it up. Should have seen it coming. Why is this bridge so low? What's going on? Why are people just standing out here? Just standing around, staring at each other in front of ho Hogwarts. Hagrid's had me confused. I'm like, if I'm going to do one more ride, this has got to be the choice. 90 minute wait, but. Just waited 60 minutes for nothing, so might as well wait 90 minutes to actually do something. Knock on wood. Sadly, I had to veto Hagrid's. I sat there for about 20 minutes, and I got to thinking, if I ride the ride, it's going to be 9, 30, <laughs> 10 o'clock before I get off the ride. I still need to get something to eat because I can't go to bed on an empty stomach. And then, with all that everything, I'm not getting back to the hotel. I'm not getting to sleep till probably midnight or later, and then having to get up at like 2 to go on the race. Didn't seem like a good idea, so as much as I wanted to get one last ride in, I gotta be smart on this one. So I was looking at mobile order options, something I could grab while heading out of City Walk. And I came across something interesting, something I've never tried before, up in an area of City Walk I pretty much never go. Bob Marley's Tribute to Freedom. Had some good looking food, seemed like it'd be easy enough to get it and eat it and wouldn't be the worst stuff in the world to eat the night before the race so that's what we're going with just actually have to find it first here we go right like I drew it up so that was actually where you go in if you want to sit down and eat mobile pickup window is actually over here so we'll just uh, hang out till they say our reporters ready all right, got the Jamaican sampler platter with yuca fries, a beef and veggie patty, and some wings. Now, if you follow the channel closely, you know I didn't have the best experience in actual Jamaica, so what better way to right that wrong than by eating Jamaican food in Orlando, Florida? Yuca fries, bon appetit. Chicken eyes are better. I don't know if this is beef or veggie, but we're going for it.
Give it on his back. Okay, back to the room. Not gonna let that little snafu at the end ruin the day because it was a great day. Things went really awesome for the first like 95% of the day, right up until things fell apart with Velocicoaster. And like I said, I screwed myself talking about how like this is like the number one thing I want to do on this trip. Blah 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 blah. blah. That was the minute I started talking like that, I should have known it wasn't gonna happen. So, but the rest of the day it was. I mean, and I should have known by based on how well everything else went, how all of my other plans fell into place properly. Should have known there was something waiting coming for me at the end, but back in the hotel now watching the Colts and the Texans battle it out. It's awesome to see two AFC South teams fight for playoff spots while the Titans are eliminated and Mike Vrabel's rumored to leave. Everybody hates Rand Carthon. It's good times to be a Titans fan, but I gotta get some sleep. I'm running some water because I'm gonna wash up, clean up, so I can just get up and go in the morning, but that's what's next. But few hours away we are running the full Walt Disney World Marathon that's gonna be the next vlog you see so you will learn if I survive honestly I'm gonna tell you right now the thing I'm not I'm not so much worried about running the race as I am like successfully pulling off an Uber I've booked an Uber I've got an Uber scheduled to come and pick me up that's the thing I'm most nervous about is that actually happening and even if they do pick me up actually getting there because like I don't know if like because the road closures because the marathon weekend or because of like every single theme park has redone their ride share locations the guys that have been picking me up have had no idea where they're going at any point in time this week it's been crazy so hopefully knock on wood we get to the race successfully with no issues and we can just run and get it over with thanks for watching stay tuned for that one and everything else that we have coming up here on the channel appreciate everybody tuning in till the next time Enjoy your life.